Hi, Mike here. Another video and another client question and solution to share with you. This time it's dates in Power Query. The client had a CSV file that contained two sets of dates and ultimately they wanted to calculate the number of days between the dates. When the CSV file was imported into Excel, the dates were one, being treated as text and two, in the wrong format. My client needed to convert the dates from MMDDYYYY to YYYY MMDD format. In this video, I share the solution that I came up with. As usual, if you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. So here's the CSV file. It's not the exact same file, but it includes two columns of dates in the format month, day, year. I've started a new Excel file and I want to import that CSV into Excel. And I do that by clicking data from text or CSV. Select the CSV file, which is on my desktop and click import. I don't want to load the data straight into Excel. I know I've got some work to do on it first. So I'll click transform data and that will open up the query editor. The first thing I'm going to do in the query editor is to take the data that's in row one and make it the headings. For some reason, it's not recognized the data that's in the first row of the CSV as headings. So I need to go to transform use first row as headers and that sorts that one out the next thing i need to do is to convert the data that's in the start date and the end date columns into real dates at the moment they are text entries that look like dates and to do that i'll do the start date first click the abc and select using locale and because the data in the start date column, I need it to be treated as dates in US format. I change the data type to date and I change the locale to US because it's in month, day, year format. And then repeat the process for end date. Click the ABC, select using locale, set the data type to date and set the locale to US. The next thing I'm going to do is to create two extra columns. One will have the start date in it in the right format and one will have the end date in it in the right format. Remember the format is year, month, day. So I'll click on add column, custom column. I need to give the column a name. I'll just call it SD for start date. I will rename it later and then I need to enter the formula. Because it's quite a long formula, rather than typing it for the video, I've copied and pasted it in. What it's doing is it's using M code, M being the language of the query editor, to create a text string that combines the year, the month and the day from the start date column. So now I'll click OK and we have our new column. I'll repeat that process for the end date. So I'll click add column, custom column, call the column ED, and I'll just copy the formula in. It's exactly the same formula, except it's using end date. I have put the formula in the description of the video at the bottom so that at least you can copy and paste it in yourself. So I'll just click OK there. I'll then delete the original start date and end date columns. I can do that in a couple of ways. My favorite is to go to home, choose columns and just untick the columns I don't want and click OK. And then I'll rename the SD and the ED by double clicking on the column names and just over typing them. So that one's start date and this one is end date. And if I want to reposition those columns so that they are to the left of client code, which is where they were in the original CSV file, I can just do that with drag and drop. So drag that across and drag end date across. Now, if you look just to the left of start date and end date, you can see 
ABC123, which tells us that the data in those columns is not a date. It's actually text. If I convert that into a date, the problem I've got is it changes the format. So I'll just delete the step that converted the date format. What I need to do is actually come out of the query editor and back into Excel by clicking on File, Close and Load. And that will load the data into a new sheet in the spreadsheet. Now, although these cells here do contain text entries, if I did a formula on that data, it will actually treat it as a date. So if I go up to D1 and I put a heading like uh, days between, and then I create a formula. So in D2, I put equals B2 minus A2. I then get the right answers. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. I'll catch you in the next video, but until then, have an excellent day.